Yes, welcome again to the Hobo and I guess it's Cat, but Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. I'd like to wish everyone a happy New Year's. And just to open up the show, there, four, four. Oh, oh, baby. Oh. Wait a second. There we go. No one. What's wrong? I don't even know if you can hear this. I'm going to back up a little bit more. Here we go. I don't think I can actually hear this. So right now we're kind of like grooving out because it's, it's almost New Year's time. Woohoo! Although probably by the time this video is posted, it'll probably be after New Year's because I saw a lot of stuff to do. But again, I'd like to wish everyone out there in the YouTube world a happy New Year. Again, please celebrate responsibly. Again, the only person harmed in this video was no one. But probably later tonight, someone's going to give me a Nasty stairs. One, two, three. There we go, slipping. You. So again, happy new year, everyone. Oh, there you go. She got her few minutes of airtime. And this is... My name is Hobo Tom. Let me readjust that. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching tonight on this New Year's Eve, or probably New Year's Day by the time this is up. We'll have to finish up my pizza again. Don't forget, drink responsibly. I'm staying in. I'm cooking a pizza. Let's see when it closes. Let me mute that for now. And again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching for the. I've been up since March. So again, thank you guys very much for all your support. Again, I could send everyone out there a happy birthday wish. Let's see here. Let me do some techno wizardry. Go there. And I don't have enough for everyone to give you something special. But bum sucks again. Happy New Year. Saint 3, 318, again, Happy New Year. Rage Trons, again, yeah, definitely. Um, I know probably on, well, I'll save that, well, I'll save that for the, well, I'll probably be going to the Monday Night Raw here in Orlando, so I'll definitely post that. Um, Saint 318, I'm, I think I'm off, or at least I did work late. The fourth, so I'll probably be posting that. Again, Jack Carlson, thank you very much. Happy New Year. Alex Stacy, thank you very much. Donovan Christopher, thank you. Derek Jones, yes, you definitely deserve a thank you. 
Teen Jones. Excellent. Um, Nostrin, thank you very much. Church MG, thank you very much. Vincent Nieto, yes. And thank you. Oh, I can show more. See, who else is there? Nostrin, Nostrin. Uh, Timothy J, uh, uh, TJ Martha, thank you very much. And all those who I could not mention, I could not see your subscribe. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, please enjoy the next series of videos. The first one is going to be my raw review. The second one is going to be my own New Year's match creation. And the third one is going to be how to make a crab ragoon pizza. Again, I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you guys very much. Have a good, safe, and happy new year, and I wish everyone the best for the new year of 2019. Hopefully it's a little... Oh, wait, I'm on. Yes. Wow, I wonder how this sounds. It's like the old way you used to put like, some music up. Yeah, I'd like to wish everyone a happy New Year's. There's the champagne glass. Champagne is always good. Yeah. This New Year's a little bit of party mood. But more so importantly, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed that introduction. I'd like to thank my cat, who's right now down there taking her nap. She's kind of exhausted. He's running around a little bit. You see him? You hear some music in the background? Just a little bit of a party. So, again, but more so, my name is Hobo Tong. You're watching the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. And if you out there in YouTube land want to find a, diff a different, maybe more, a better name, for my show. Again, you can feel free to email me at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com or you can also send a comment and while you're sending that comment, you can feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully one day in 2019, I'll be monetized. Um, oh, now it's time to talk about some wrestling because it was a fun-filled day today. A lot done. Again, drinking the champagne. Watch wrestling. And I also made a little wrestling video. Just at the end of the show. And the Hobo's Kitchen bonus. So let's see. Let me shut some stuff down. So, so, so I can actually talk about stuff. Talk about pro wrestling now. There we go. And let's see. Christmas next year, I want to get a new mic. What's it? There we go. Hello? Can you hear me? No, not the headphone, I want the mic in. Yeah, I think that sounds better. Oh, wow, that does sound so much better. Well, I don't want to see that on my screen, though. My weeks. Again, my name is Hobo Tom. You're watching the Hobo and his girlfriend. If you have a better title, you can send it to me. I've had a couple ideas. Or, out there in YouTube land, ladies, if you want the, if you like the way that crab ragoon pizza looks, and you want to have that every so often on special days, here is your next new squeeze. And that's enough self-promotion. For as one famous person once said, self-promotion is the meaning called the mute button. Then comment, comment me if you know where that's from. Let's talk about some pro wrestling. I put a nice little... No, oh, thumbnail, that's what it's called. I just had a, had a champagne bubble go into my brain or something. Now let's talk about Raw. Raw was amazing. 
I know, I know. It was it was pre-taped, I think, on Friday. I think it was Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday. I forget which. Campaign is good. But still, for those out in Detroit and who were working and or busy, this was actually in a really fun show. I was shocked because they are making changes. Raw's improving a lot. Before it was a boring show. You hear that? I know I kind of missed some spots because I, I was cooking. Again, if you want to see that video of me making a crab ragoon pizza, which, by the way, was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Especially after I started to cook stuff and mix stuff up. I figured it would taste way too salty and too crabby. I think I needed just a pinch more salt. But I was pleasantly shocked. Nice little proesca with that. And then I had some scotch -wish, scotches with lemonade ginger ale in them. Very good, by the way. And of course, because now it's, it's, it's well, now I'm past midnight. Again, Happy New Year, everyone. Have the obligatory bottle of champagne. It's a brute because that's the ones that was suggested to me by my coworkers. So I had a pink champagne, blue champagne, California champagne, but this is the brute champagne. Good stuff. Oh, I better make this video quick. I need I need a refill. Let's start off with a raw. Again, this was really fun. It was really good. It was really entertaining. Starts off with a steel cage match. I was worried a little bit when I saw this match that this is the first match. This is going to be Burnoutville. Because, darn, this was good. You had Dolph Ziggler versus Drew McIntyre in a steel cage to start off Raw. That could have been an undercard match on any pay-per-view. I mean, in some pay-per-views, it could have actually been the main event. That's amazing. Oh, and also give you a recap about what the program is going to look like for the rest of the week. Because, again, there are some changes. I'm trying to provide more content for you, my YouTube viewers. I already gave a shout-out to all my subscribers that are publicly subscribed. So, again, if I didn't mention you, I'm sorry again. Feel free to publicly subscribe again. Send me an email or even a comment. I think a lot of my subscribers did comment, though. So I might have sent it just that commented. That's okay. But let's get back to wrestling. This was an amazing match. I mean, Dolph... First, he does this smart thing. If I was in a ring versus Drew McIntyre, the first thing I would do would be that I would try to escape too. I don't even care. I'd just be like, I'd hang out by the ropes, roughing the bell. You would see this guy go so quickly up that steel cage. It wouldn't even be funny. Um, Drew has some massive chops. So. Ooh. I think the only thing I think my only two things with this match is that why do the wrestlers go for the pin? I know it's a way to win, but just incapacitate. I think once a wrestler handcuffs someone else to a ring, to the ring ropes, and then escaped, smart. I like that. That and I, I kind of miss the old-fashioned blue, blue steel bar. Again, this was amazing, though. Drew McIntyre proves that he's a beast because he kicked out of two Famousers and a zigzag. There was an amazing superplex. I think it, it wasn't off the top of the cage, but I think Drew was on the top rope, and he caught Dolph, who was trying to climb out of the ring. That was amazing. 
Eventually, Drew hit the hit the claymore and got the pin. Drew has a good walk. He has a good gait, I guess, for being a heel. Because he started to walk out of that cage like he owned the cage. That's good. But of course, because he is a heel, he just did not walk out of the cage. He walked out with purpose. He got a steel chair and began to beat down on Dolph Ziggler. That was amazing. Can you start doing amazing stuff like this? I was scared because I'm like, ooh, this is a surf and turf quality match. And this is just the beginning of Raw. What's going to happen now? Then we have a Seth promo. Um, he wants to. He calls out Dean Ambrose. Triple H says, eh, eh, there, "There's no more, no more guineas anymore. You have to earn it." I'll, and Seth goes, on, "I'll burn everyone's house down." That's what Triple H. That's what I want you to do. I want you to burn everyone down. And Seth says, "I'll burn your family down if I have to." Shane shows up. Kind of be, tries to be the peacemaker. Um, the winner of the battle royal that they hold, the eight man battle royal they hold, actually gets to take on Dean Ambrose. So you have to earn things now. So it's pretty good that way. Um, Seth did have a match against Bobby Lashley because, again, be very careful who you say you'll call out. It might come true. So the next thing we have, and again, this, this card really continued. I mean, you had a battle royal, which is always fun. Um, have the eight participants: uh, Mojo Rally, Bo Dallas, Chris Axel, Kurt Hawkins, Tyler Breeze, Zack Ryder, Baron Corbin, and Apollo Cruz. I can count. And it was fun. I mean, it's like a classic Battle Royal. Once you realize Apollo Crews was in the ring, you're like, okay. It's going to be him versus Baron. Mojo's not winning it. Tyler Breeze isn't winning it. Zack Ryder's not winning it. Tag Team never wins it. And Kurt Hawkins... He's not winning it either. And Tyler Breeze is just lost. And he's back in NXT for a little bit too. So you, the only downside is that he kind of knew what the result was going to be. I did like the way they got there though. Um, where Baron Corbin versus Apollo Crews. Again, a couple of false finishes. Apollo Crews is amazingly athletic. I mean, I'll give him all the props in the world for all his athleticism. Always. Um, again, he took Baron, he took Baron Corbin out. Apollo Cruz won because I th want to say the order was Tyler Breeze, B Team, Hawking, um, Bo Dallas, and Curtis Axel were kind of eliminated simultaneously. Kurt Hawkins and Ryder. And then Baron Corbin. No, no, it was, um, I'm sorry. I guess Tyler Breeze. I was kind of cooking, so I kind of half realized. Tyler Breeze, Mojo Rally, the B team, Hawkins, Ryder, Baron, and Apollo Crews won. I mean, this was a fun match. Listen, I'll never say anything bad about a Battle Royal. Most Battle Royals, including this one, only because it's a little gimmicky. And once you figured out who was going to win, this is a cheeseburger match. Then we go on to 
a Baron Corbin segment with Elias. Elias, of course, references Detroit Rock City! And I still have to get my haircut because I think the one barbershop by my house is closed. New Year's Eve is kind of a weird day. Small businesses are closed. Big businesses are always open. Walmart's still open 24 hours a day. Well, thankfully, because I didn't have to get my lemonade, ginger ale, and my black eyed peas for tomorrow's feast of lamb. And black eyed peas, stuffing. Which I could coin too. No, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. I'll debate about that tomorrow at work. I'll get it tomorrow morning. <laughs> and probably I'm uploading this. This is going to be a real fun thing to edit tonight. Again, um, Elias does reference Rock City! Detroit Rock City. It was okay. It was just a really good outside brawl. I don't even think it was a match. Just the fact that he started to beat on Baron Corden. You know what? I'll give this a rating. This is going to be a ham sandwich. Then our next match, it's a six-woman tag match. You have Sasha Banks and Bailey, the, the boss and hug connection, along with Ember Moon. Versus the Red Squad. You know, Liv Morgan's fun to watch. I actually saw her once and at an NXT show here in Daytona Beach. She did not seem too happy about being in Daytona Beach. Wait a second. I'm not too happy about being in Daytona Beach. There's something to that. She just seemed upset. like, why am I dealing with these people? What am I doing here? Liv is, Liv is, she's actually fun to watch. I mean, she has kind of the basic wrestling moves down. She has her whole repertoire. I think it's a little bit been more simplified since her days in NXT. So she's still developing. She's getting better. She has a set of lungs on her. She has a pink hair and the blue tongue. How do you get a blue tongue? I know how you get pink hair. Well, actually, I know how you get a blue tongue. Actually, I know how you get a black black jelly beans. I think she admitted she just eats like a lot of blue raspberry Jolly Ranchers. I think, or what's that other thing? Um, I forget. It's like a powder thing, and it's like, is it right on her tongue? Turns it blue. You gotta love modern food colorings. Again, Liv, she's screaming at everyone. She screams at her opponents. She screams at the referee. That was good. She has a set of lungs on her. I wonder if she's a screamer. Oh, wait a second. That's, that's neither here nor there. Sarah Logan still has to figure out who she is. This whole Viking woman gimmick. Eh. Ruby Riot's still, still how you love lace in, in, in my eyes and in my heart. So, she, Ruby Riot's just another version of how you love lace, that's all. She's a mean how you love lace. Or, as she said, how you love lace is a cousin. Um, again, it was your basic six women wrestling match. Eventually, you, you know, there's going to be a brawl somewhere involved. There was actually a, PS, a public service announcement about do not perform any of these moves at home, in public, at school, or anywhere. And that's kind of a flashback. Jeez, into the 90s. They used to show that. And they showed on the video game. It's old. My public service announcement 
Ladies and gentlemen, oh wow, I need a refill. If you're going to drink, please drink in the safety of your own house. Do not drive. If you do choose to drive back from someplace on amateur hour, which is what it is now, I do not recommend that. Please have a designated driver. Get home safely. And if you are the designated driver, just drink some soda. Don't drink if you're the driver. Don't drive if you're drinking. Public service announcement from a hobo Tom. Now, with that said, I'm going to take just a little break. I do need to refill myself. Oh, I'm back. That's right. Oh, wait. I have to put my microphone on. I forgot all about that. Uh, you mic one day. War. Ah, the mighty trumpet. Oh, yes. I have my little refill here. Let me get back a little bit. Oh, I'm glad you cannot see that. Well, I'd probably be copyright violated. Oh, that's right. My copyright violations are over, too. Yes. Live stream, live stream, live stream. Yeah, that video's over. That's the end of that. That's right, I can live stream now. It's January 1. Ah! YouTube, you take that. WWE, you take that. I think it's because I played the volume too loud for the Mix and Match Challenge. And again, again I'll get into that shortly. Mm. Brute. I don't know what the difference is. Oh, wow. Whatever that did. Oh, that's a sweater. El Tipo paper. Oh, but again, getting back to the wrestling match. I'm sorry about that. I took a little break. It was fun again. Liv, Liv got triple teamed. I thought for a moment Liv was there to take eat the pin. Nope, I was wrong. It was well. well I'll tell you. I mean, I guess, but again, and Ruby writes. It was good. Ruby writes. At least she's book strong. Even though she's with um, Liv and Morgan, it would be interesting to watch Ruby Wright go full heel, full right squad. And turn on Liv and Sarah Morgan. That would be good. Sarah Morgan just has to find a better character. This whole again, this whole Viking thing. Yes, I'm having lamb tomorrow for my New Year's Day dinner. But eh. I kind of liked her better as that Kentucky backwoods woman. I think. At least it made sense to me when you start flip flopping. In really quick succession. That's confusing. It's one thing if that's your gimmick to flip flop. Like um, Damien Sandow and to some degree the Velveteen Dream, who has the most amazing ring wear ever, next to Rick Rude. And of course the Macho Man. But just flip flopping within months? And no one's actually sure what she is. Never know. Um, eventually, again, there's the triple team move on on Sarah Morgan. This time she's the pin and not Liv Morgan, thankfully. Oh, that deserves another sip. I'll also take a look at I have other stuff. Um, again, it was an eclipse onto Sarah Logan, which led to the not the back, back the backstabber by Sasha Banks, and then the I'll call it for what it is. The Macho Elbow. 
of the Macho Man. The one and only Macho Man. And I just broke my camera again. My camera doesn't like fast, weird motions. But again, so this was, again, it was predictable. You're not going to have Ruby Wright eat the pen. Sarah Logan ate the pen this time. Again, it was a fun match, though. This was another really good cheeseburger match. Then the next match, again, is a really another darn fun match. It was... Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley. Leo Rush is improving on his mic work by leaps and bounds. I mean, it's really amazing some of the lines he's he's coming out with. Um, you're not gonna burn down. Everyone's gonna wind up kissing Bobby Lashley's butt because he's he's not going to be because Bobby Lashley's the Almighty, and he's going to dominate Seth Rollins. And eventually, Seth Rollins is going to kiss his butt, his almighty butt. That was funny. I haven't heard of butt, butt kissing matches since, gee, the early 2000s, I guess. It was fun. And, I mean, if, if this is, if it's just reference like that, that's really all we need. So that's still really good. With this, Lashley's just showing how powerful he is. Lashley's definitely definitely the more powerful of the two. Um, he has his reliance on speed and being a little sneaky. Although that might change to come the end of the match. Leo Rush comes in. He did an amazing hurricanrana on Seth Rollins and then drove Seth into the ring post. That was amazing. That at least gets a thumbs up. And another sip of champagne. Good stuff. Um, Seth pulled out a new move. I saw a flying shoulder tackle. Before that, Seth started to chase Leo Rush around the ring. He could not catch him. Leo Rush went through his legs, jumped over his head. It was almost like a Benny Hill chase sequence. And I forget if it's Benny Hill who first did it, or if it was Monty Python and the Flying Circus. Or maybe they did it at the same time. It's one of those. That's what it kind of looked and felt like, though. Oh, I need to come back of that and set that to that music. That would really up my production level. Take a video. Of me. I know what I could do. Take a video of me chasing my cat around and set it to Benny Hill music. Yes, that will give me instant views. People do like cat videos. And this was a fun match. However, it was a dust to finish, baby. You know what that means? It means nobody wins. But this here is the WWE, so someone has to win. You know who won? Bobby Lashley, baby. Because Seth chose to hit Bobby Lashley with a chair. That's a no-no. And I have to find that book. On Wednesday, along with getting a haircut. But Bobby Lashley won by DQ, baby. It was a dusty finish. But up to that point, I've never done this before. I'm, I'm the dusty one. I only eat dusty cheeseburgers. But this is going to be a dusty surfing surf, baby.
Because this was darn fun. Again, this was a surf and turf match. Even though there was a dusty finish. The dusty finish, baby. It was still really fun. And it sets really the story for Seth from now, prior until WrestleMania. So prior to WrestleMania, it will be Seth versus Dean for the IC belt. I can live with that. The next match then, you have Jinder Mahal versus the, oh, and the Singh brothers. It's the Bollywood boys. Versus uh, Slater and Rhino in a handicap match. Uh, Jinder and Slater start off. Again, Jinder is too strong, but Slater has a, this is a little bit quicker. as a better wrestling acumen. Then the Bollywood boys come back in the ring. I know one of them was legitimately injured for a while. And I just think they've had them out of the ring for whatever reason. I mean, the things are just there really to be beat up. And this time they were beat up by a Rhino, and that was good. Um, Slater then started to beat up the things, I think, outside the ring. And that allowed Jinder to hit the Colossus on Rhino. Rhino ate the pin. Which, hey, you know what? He, he's a vet. He can do it. He can help push Jinder and the things to the moon and back. I think Slater knows he's going to be on the mid card forever. I mean, he. He and Reiner did have their high point when they won the SmackDown Tag Team Champion in a really good, fun way. So again, cheers to you, Rhino, because you, Heath Slater, the Bollywood Boys, and Jinder Mahal managed to put on a cheeseburger match. There we go. I think like caught up with me, I think. It's weird seeing yourself on on camera. I think, does it do that on when I do live stream? It's been a while since I've live streamed, so I kind of forget about that stuff. Then we had our next match because Apollo Cruz won the eight man battle royal. He gets to face Dean Ambrose. And there was a Macho Man reference. Again, you have a Macho Man reference. I'm wearing my Macho Man shirt. And I saw another Macho Man shirt. It didn't look as good as this one. Nor did it look as good as the one I'm going to get myself for probably my Christmas gift. Later this month, because someone didn't get me a didn't give me a Christmas gift. I'm very mad at some people. You treat me like a hobo. I'm gonna become a hobo. You know who you are. You need to just need to subscribe too. So again, this was a really fun match. The thing I like about this, this is a new matchup. And it's a new interesting twist. If Dean Ambrose has to face a new opponent every night, at least you're not getting the same thing over and over and over again. So hopefully this is... I could... If it's, again, if he wrestles Apollo Crews one or two more times this month, say Apollo Crews says, you know what? I was tired. Let, let me take you on at the Rumble. I could live with that if it's going to be next week, the Rumble, and the next Monday. Then let's tell WWE, tranquilo, have some champagne, relax. You don't have to have a Paul Cruz on all the time against the same opponent. This gets old. I wonder if the new YouTube. Kick me out because I'm drinking on YouTube. That would be that would be terrible. Again, 
Dean, I mean, you know, he's looking comfy clothes. I don't know what kind of sweatpants there are with a belt on them. That's what it seems like Dean's wearing, like that and a tank top. He, he does look like, and this was referenced by Steve here and Larson, he looks like he looks like Dean from like the DC Comics. The leather bomber jacket, that kind of DC villain look. It fits, though. I do, the one thing I'll differ in opinion with, I do like his new music. At least it's different. So I do, I do like that air reach siren. That's always, I play DJ Hero. That, that always, always intrigues me. I always like using that one a lot. Uh, again, it was a really good back and forth again. You have a new match, new opponents, really good. Apollo Cruz is as, le as athletic as anything. The only thing, though, he went to that well too often. He missed, I think, Frog Splash. On the inside part of the ring, he had a moonsault outside of the ring. But inside the ring, he tried, I think, a frog splash, and, and Dean caught him. Again, Dean's smart. And he's a heel, and he does typical heel things. If someone's going to pick me up, I'm going to rake their eyes, too. I'm no dummy. Mama didn't raise no dummy. Dummy. So, again, Dean Ember's smart. The only thing that's... Getting semi old is every time Corey Graves references the fact that Renee Young is married to Dean Ambrose. He always wants to get some some inside scoop on the lunatic fringe. I don't know. It gets kind of old though, only because it seems. I don't want to say fake. Contrived. That's a better word. It seems contrived. Again, Dean Ambrose picked up the win. Again, this is because it was so different. It's a surf and turf match. And then the main event of the evening. You have Klingon, I'm sorry, Tamina. And Nia Jax. Tamina still looks like a Klingon in that outfit, though. She has to change outfits somehow. Nia Jax has to change outfits, too, somehow. Those two could use just a repackaging. Not a new character. I, I like their character stuff. They just need to look different. Looking like a Klingon just seems really... Fooey. I was playing their music really loud out there, too. Where's over there? It is New Year's Eve, so again, have a party, folks. Again, that calls for a sip of champagne. Uh-oh. I gotta finish this video. Should not be taking two breaks during, during video. We have Tamina and Nine Jacks versus Natalia and Ronda Rousey. This was good. It starts off as a brawl. Whoa! Ronda goes absolutely berserker, though. I like berserker Ronda. That was good. Natalia eventually comes in. Natalia's a little PO2. But of course, Natalia's going to take the brunt of it. Ronda hit a crossbody from the top to the floor. That's a lot to do. That's a big distance. I've done a moonsault off the top rope once. That scared me. And it scared my friend twice as much when he saw this big dude do a backflip off a top rope and looked like he was going to fall flat on him and make him a part of the ring mat. I'll tell you what. You listen to me, folks. A moonsault hurts. The guy doing it, probably just as much as the guy who takes it. So it's vicious. That's why I always have a tremendous respect for the luchadors that do all the flippy top rope stuff. I could do a moonsault. I've done a moonsault once. 
See that? That's a one. Not two. Once. And give props, big, huge props for Ronda. And tell you, uh, she's just there to be beat up. They're not going to have Ronda Rousey get beat up. Um, Jax, she's strong too. She just picked up Ronda Rousey like she was nothing. Again, that's a good point. You know, the more agile fighter versus the more brutish, bigger, stronger wrestler. Wait. That makes sense. Wow. Pro wrestling. Um, eventually, Ronda did make Tamina tap out. What? See, the thing is, they both wore black stars. It's so hard to tell. I'll say it was... No, because she had... I think it was Nia Jax. No, I'll, you know I'll say Tamina. One of those two. Ronda Rousey won by Marmar. Really a good... Turf and turf main event. And that was raw. And for I know it's it, it's 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 tape. It aired on New Year's Day for those of the for those of us not in Detroit and not and who were actually working and had stuff to do. It was a really darn good Raw. They're actually listening to the people. Not doing exactly what the people want. Trust me, I wouldn't do what any of these idiots want around my place. Oh, no. But again, they're, they're listening to the fans' reaction, saying, you know what? The fans just want something different. We can give them something different. Not that hard. So a couple of quick programming notes. I'll try and keep this under two minutes. Um, on Thursday, no, actually Wednesday, Wednesday I'm going to make my New Japan Wrestle Kingdom predictions, because I think I'll see it Thursday morning-ish, Friday morning, I think I'll, I think it comes on, I want to say, when does the last show come on? No, that was Australia. I want to say probably... Well, for sure, Friday I'm going to have a reaction. If I don't do anything else, it's going to be a reaction video on Friday to the New Japan Wrestle Kingdom. I'm going to try to live stream it. I think it comes on the East Coast at 2 a.m., which isn't that bad. So Thursday is a beer night for me. So I'm going to put my reaction videos up probably Wednesday. I'm going to see if I can live stream Thursday morning now that I'm able to live stream. If not, worse comes worse, I, I do a reaction video Friday. Uh, sorry, son. Then Monday is going to... Ooh, Monday Night Raw is going to be a little bit different. Because hopefully if things go the way I think and hope, the way they go. You're going to see Hobo Tom in Orlando, Florida at the Amway Center live for Monday Night Raw when it comes here to Orlando, Florida. Oh, I don't know. I'm kind of torn if I should go to the Raw in Jacksonville. I might have to contact a friend. And if she says, yeah, I'll see it once. Ooh, maybe. That's a lot. But for sure, you'll get actually a live video, or not live video. But see what it looks like live Monday Night Raw through the eyes. Hobo Tom. So again, I know I'm out in the Frendo community. Any of those in the Frendo community are going to the Monday Night Raw in Orlando? Hey, feel free to shout out to me. Because I'll be there. I'll probably be wearing my macho shirt. Yeah, because the good brothers, Carl Anderson's on SmackDown. And I don't want to wear my club stuff. Or my hobo shirt there. Oh, maybe I should wear my hobo shirt there. 
also thinking about this. He's gonna be my ma- it's probably gonna be my Macho Man. Not my DIY. I say that for NXT events. So on Monday it'll be a little bit different, folks. Probably be later. Probably see it Tuesday. Then it'll be live shots. Um, Tuesday's gonna be the typical SmackDown. And I have to see if the impact on Impact's doing some weird stuff. So, so definitely those two shows are next week. So you'll have SmackDown, your typical Tuesday time. Wednesday will be New Japan predictions. Thursday, Friday-ish, going to be either my reactions or my react or my re- review and recap of it. My either triple R or double R. Monday night's going to be Hobo Tom live in Orlando, Florida. Hopefully I won't get kicked out. I'm a hobo. Aluminum sneaking. Come up some fat woman's dress. Wait in line to get autographs now. Um, Tuesday's going to be the typical tape smackdown. Probably 90% sure that 10% chance of it being live. It's a weird thing. And that's going to be it. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching in. Have a happy new year, everyone. And happy new year from at least Hobo. Be so long, gonna be so long, gonna be here in Bosnia. Wait a second, this isn't that song. Wait a second. I need a whoa. What are you at? Oh, wait a second. I'm live. I'd like to thank everyone for bearing with me for this very long show. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and say this show has been way too long. We'll say it's not long enough. We'll say you need more wrestling. Um, this is kind of the second part. Again, you saw first my introduction. It was a happy new year to everyone out there from my cat and I. Then I talked about some WWE Raw tonight. And now we're going to have, have my own special. This is my New Year's Eve day WWE 2K17 special programming. And it was a really fun show. Um, You can watch the matches. And then there's also a special Cooking with a Hobo after show. Where I show you how to make a crab ragoon pizza, which, by the way, tasted amazing. I didn't actually think it was going to turn out as good as it did. Someone's going to be happy out there. Um, so for this card, this is again a kind of a special event. I do the WWE 2K17s for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling DBBL. No, D, D, B, B, F, L, W. D, B, B, F, L, W. Daytona Beach Bum Fight League Wrestling. And in our opening match, you have kind of a classic match because Corporate Tom is making quite a name for himself. He's taking on the Techno Blue Ranger. Whose two favorite days are Halloween, and New Year's. One, he's all dressed up for Halloween, and two, he looks like a giant blue mirror ball. Corporate Tom does not like holidays. Corporate Tom says, "Get back to work. Get back to work. No fun for you." And then in the next match, yes, yeah, the next. I think it's the, yeah, the next match. I forget the exact order. The next match you have Gigi Heather, who has still retained the bestest girlfriend ever belt. I don't know how. And she's going against Asuka. I might have to get woman to, to take that belt off of her. Too strong, though. But we'll see if she's ready for Asuka. And then you have the Cuban Connection. 
And in their corner, La Generica versus Blake and Murphy and Alexa Bliss. Hey, it's a back in time match. Hey, hey the Pitbull song's pretty good. And then you have a brother versus brother Hell in a Cell match to see who is going to face. Taj for the always underweight champion. That should be interesting. Special guest referee, the guy that trained them, Old Tom. And then the main event of the evening, we have Hobo Tom in a last Hobo standing match. Versus John Cena. That should be interesting. Remember last time you saw John Cena, he got mugged by Hobo Tom, and Hobo Tom took his Under the Bridge Championship belt. That should be interesting. There's also some weird backstage segments that are going to lead up to the Mardi Gras Mayhem event in March. Wow. Two more months, almost three more months. How about that? Again, so enjoy the matches. Also, stay tuned and figure out how to make a yummy, delicious. And I was shocked at how good this was. I thought it was going to. It sounds weird. The way I made it is really darn good. And I think I saw the Pizza Places recipe for it, which is probably just a little bit better than mine. But mine, I'll tell you what, I was shocked by it. In fact, I actually saved a piece for later. That's how good it is. If it's good enough where I eat the whole thing minus one piece, because I actually am giving, giving that to a friend, you know that was good if I'm giving my food to someone I know to eat. Again, that shows you how to make a crab ragoon pizza. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can always email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Email a new name. Email new new food, new food types for me to cook and show you guys. Email me new mash new mashes to make for the WWE K17 series for the Daytona Beach Bum Fight Bum Fight Wrestling League Bum Fight League Wrestling E B B F L W. One day I'll make that logo. That's another project for the new year. Again, Happy New Year, everyone. Again, have your champagne. Public service announcement, though, if you do choose to drink like this guy does on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day now. Wow. Do not drive. And if you are driving, do not drink unless it's a delicious ice-cold Coca-Cola or water. Or I think the other choice is that I used to like to have just club soda with a lime. I did that once. I was a designated driver. Yes, you can give me my props for that. I think I had like three club sodas with lime. And the woman asked me, it's like, well, don't you want anything harder? I'm like, I'm driving. All she does is smile. Say, you're the man. So again, if you're the designated driver, club soda with lime, you too. Well, I'm the hobo, but you could be the man. Hey folks, welcome to the New Year's special. I am Hobo Tom. We start off, what's this guy doing? He just killed Santa Claus in the last show I had. Like, wh wh what's up with this guy? Does he just want everyone to work every day? No fun? This guy will sell for nothing. I mean, what's up with this guy? Comes out there, his polo shirt, black pants, shoes. It's New Year's Eve. It should lighten up. Where's this party hat at? Ooh, that's good. Whoa, that's Evil Tom in his corner. That's why. Whoa. Something's up here.
Oh, this sounds like some party music here. Some some electro music. Oh yes, they'll definitely be the fun guy. This one's gonna be electric. The fans have been demanding this one-on-one -on -one contest, and here it is. The electro the Techno Blue Ranger, look at him. Bouncing ball of energy, yes. He's so happy. He's so thankful it's New Year's Eve. It's gonna be New Year's Day soon. He's gonna party. I'm gonna party like it's 1999 or 2099. I don't, I don't even know when. I don't even, wait a second. What's up? There we go. Well, that was way too quick there. Corporate Tom's having none of that. Whoa, ten of Blue Ranger here, that's some good moves. And he brings the action back inside the ring. Yeah, I, I, I think this is good strategy, but he was successful outside. Barely any damage has been inflicted so far, but this one's not over yet. Wait, this is how he killed Santa! No! Nobody comes back from this! Mm. It won't take long for the aggression to escalate quickly in this one. You're right, Cole. These two don't like each other, and we're gonna find out how much they really do just. Oh! This is really, really dangerous. Look out! It's all academic from here. Take Sam out a second time. Was oh, Santa going after? He may be in the best fit for the pin and the win. Oh no, we know what this is. Santa's taking it. Oh, look at the background. Tom's just, just not having, he, he, so tell me everyone get back to work. Lazy bunch of slobs, get back to work. 
No fun today. Whoa. Good girl Heather just turning the dark side of the run on his flame and stuff. This belt's gone to her head. Who is going to take this belt from GG Heather? From good from goody goody Heather. Darn that's a good looking belt though. No frills, black shirt, long dress. Oh, I didn't know that. Got him off. I did that belt. Opportunity for that superstar tonight. We've seen some huge title defenses in recent years, and I'd say this one ranks right up there. Whoa! Look at that naked chick silhouette on the side. That's a darn good-looking belt, though. Goody, goody, Heather. <laughs> this glares the crowd like. I don't know. It's glares at people. You're a bunch of miscreants. You should all be back at your house. Oh, wait a second, she might get her. Oh, wow, that's a good entrance. Whoa, that's a good looking woman's NXT belt. It's not as big as the belt I made though. Oscar making her way to the ring. I for one have been looking forward to this match ever since it was added in the SummerSlam card. Asuka looks like a million she looks like a kata. She looks like a walking championship. How can she lose? That mask is awesome, though. Oh, does she do the thing with the mask? Oh, she still has the chokers on, though. Oh, she looks... Oh, yes, yeah, she does. Except for she rips the mask off. She's like... Pff. We're gonna get it on, baby. Damn, that's a good looking belt though. So, dude, she's like, I want to be that guy's girlfriend. That's. This one, I wouldn't attempt to break what's going to happen. I'd just be ready for anything. Wow! It doesn't get much better than that right there. And she raises her shoulder to interrupt the referee's count. She sure did. Vicious. She's wasting no time taking over this contest. Nobody home there. Nobody home? Cole, that looked like the house has been empty for months. Not this! What a move! Here's the cover. Look at a kick out. Uh, the kick out's all that's saving. This match goes on. This might be it. What a 
wild attempt to strike your opponent. I don't know if she could have been further off the mark. <laughs> that was like a haymaker. Like she would have taken that big home run swing. Stay down. Stay down. Wait a minute. She's going for it again. Executed perfectly. And check out the look of satisfaction in those eyes. She's looking at it early. Who do it? Sweet. She's starting to sweat a bit. This match may end right here. It's got to be over now. We have the best job in the world getting to call matches like this. You're not kidding, Cole. Sometimes I have to pitch myself to the oh my. Put it in the books. This one's got to be over now. We got a cover. And she kicks out. Man, she's not just beautiful. She's tough, too. It looks like there's some more fight left to this diva. Is that enough for the win? Whether you're lucky or not, it's not enough. Who's going to be goody goody Heather? It's not Asuka. Shoot. Give me my belt. Don't touch me. Ugly ref. Stare at my counter. You did not hear me say that last. This should be a good match. Cupid in a connection is on a roll here. Look at that. He wears the old, the old fashioned Chuck Taylor. Well, Jean Herrick in their corner. How do they talk her into this? The myths flying around the house. Who are they facing now? Who's next on their redemption? Oh, yeah! Leaf and Murphy. Wow, this is a this is a very traditional tag team match. Both teams have had their valleys out there. Look at it looks a bliss. That's actually a pretty long intro. Touch on Murphy a bit. 
I think we know what this is. That's smooth, man. I'm having a hard time figuring out what they're going to do next. Me too. I've given up even trying to figure out what they're going to do next. I'm just sitting back watching and enjoying. Look at this. He's in full control of this one. Oh, man, Murphy will be thinking about that one tomorrow. Yeah, all he's thinking about right now are seeing stars. He's looking to fly. I hope this turns out well. Watch it. Take a chance like that. Do you know how badly he must want to win this? Man, that one rocked him. Oh, his body has to be broken right now. Oh, he just showed the Lux of Bliss. Legendary does not do anything. Uh oh, Murphy is looking to end this. Sure is. Oh, one of the most effective moves in all of WWE. He needs to dig way down deep if he wants to keep going now. I don't think there are two teams I'd rather see square off against each other right now. This is amazing. Can he end it quickly? The referee counts. Tag is made. This may settle the score right here. The tag is made. <clears throat> oh, the finisher. The tag is made. Extra slow getting back to his base here. Blake avoids that one, and it's a good thing, too. Please, the low left. There's no recovery from that. As a reminder, this is an extreme rules match, a type of match made popular by ECW back in the 1990s. on the offensive. Finally, come on, Blake, get it done. He's in a little bit of trouble now. Guys, this is where we find out what he's made of. It's just too early to make a call at this point, Cole. Yeah, I agree. This match can still go either way. You know what? It's nights like this that keeps me coming back to the WWE for more and more and more. has taken so much out of this guy he's not going to give up but man, this has been physical yes. the tag is made oh and he finally gets out of the ring attacking from the top oh my gosh oh, what 
what's he going to do to follow that up? He scored the pin. Oh, and he's going to have to do something big here. His partner is in bad shape. And the soup is up. And the match continues. I love this. He simply refuses to stay down. I can't believe it. He just won't go away. Wow, that was a wild strike. Talk about missing the target. Yeah, it looked like he was completely out of desperation. It's safe to say the entire WWE locker room has just been put on notice. He's seated up. Here he comes. He thinks he has it. Whoa, I made it really sexy. I can't say that I'm all that surprised by the action. Watching Eric. But it's your night. It's your night. And I can imagine there aren't too many people at home ready to tune in for that amazing match. Wow. That was pretty good. Also known as Heaven's Waiting Room. Just looks old. Jeez, he does have a long entrance. I might as well have given him in a guy to beat A family feud match, folks. the challenge for the always underweight champion. What time is it? What time is it? Is it midnight yet? It's been a while. It is. I know it's a good question. What time? Joining us, 
because this is the WWE singles match oh. everyone is talking about. In the whole universe, oh, everyone's talking about it. Good match for him tonight, but he certainly looks up for the challenge. Here. How many more matches? Oh, there's only one more match after this. Crazy lame. This one on one match is going to be a struggle in every sense of the word. Neither man looks like they are remotely entertaining the idea of backing down. This is gonna be good. Yeah, this is a marquee match with a lot of pride and professional reputation all on the line. With these competitors, this should be amazing. Well, down here in Mobile, Alabama, these fans don't need a primer or a media guide. They know all the players in this WWE drama, and they are loud. He looks a bit off his game here, but he's very aware of who he's in there with and what he has to do to rebound. But here's the thing. You have to perform if you want to bask in that WWE glory. Brother versus a brother. He may have to start reevaluating his game plan. Regardless, we and the rest of the WWE world are in for a night to remember. Executed perfectly, and check out the look of satisfaction in those eyes. Extra slow getting back to his face here. Benefit. And there's another battery ram like shot with those heavy steps. God, there was nothing accurate about that attempted at offense. Oh, you're being too kind. Some people would use other words to describe what we just witnessed. It's just a matter of time now. What's he gonna do here? What's he gonna do here? back inside the ring. Yeah, I, I, I think this is good strategy, but he was successful outside. No, oh, thanks for coming. Look at him trying to use all the strength and power he can muster to escape this. People have been wanting to see these guys go at it for a long time about the sound of this crowd. I think they're getting what they wanted. What a move! You the hobo breaker! There's no quit in these guys, but unfortunately only one of them can be victorious here tonight. Hey, he's going for it again! Wow! It doesn't get much better than that right there!
him, guys. Just think about this, Michael. Think, oh, here he goes. And he fails to connect with anything that time. Man, that was some miss, all right. I can feel the breeze all the way over here. That's it. He's out. I thought that was it. I thought that was going to be it. Now that's how you make a statement. Just try to kill his brother. We just almost witnessed murder, folks. Wow, he's still down after that. Oh, he missed. Oh, nobody home that time. Dodges to the side of that one. Man, oh man, did he take a wide reversal? What a move! What a smart move! Avoids the impact there. figuring out what they're going to do next. Me too. I've given up even trying to figure out what they're going to do next. I'm just sitting back watching and enjoying. Quick thinking to avoid that. And there's the reversal. He may be in the best physical condition I've ever seen him in. This is what makes him one of the best in the business. to the side of that one. That wild strike found nothing but empty air that time. <laughs> Man, that's what you call swinging. We know what this is. Will it be enough for the win? out of the way. He may be in the best physical condition I've ever seen him in. What a brutal beating we've seen dished out so far here tonight. Look at this! Could it be? That's it. He's done. Good Lord, that wasn't even close. So that's what it's like being so far off the mark. Sees the opportunity to go high. From the top! Take a chance like that. Do you know how badly he must want to win this? Here we go for the win. They think they got him. What a win! Man, he's got to feel great. So, Aiden Awesome, the next time I have a show, Aiden Awesome versus Taj.
trophy, I guess. exactly how he drew this one up. We might be seeing the beginning of the end. That's it. He's out. Oh, he's on Dream Street. It's just a matter of time now. Oh, I don't think he was prepared. And he breaks the cover, forcing the referee to stop the count. Well, that's just not enough to get the job done. Just when you thought it was over. Wow. Nothing accurate about that attempt at offense. Oh, you're being too kind. Some people would use other words to describe what we did. And there's the reversal. He's looking hapless out there. Look at this. Something. What a move. What a smart move. He's starting to feel it here. Looks like he may have let his guard down there for a moment and it cost him. Regardless, we and the rest of the WWE world are in for a night to remember. Whether you like it or not, there's the match right there. <laughs> oh! Still brothers! You gotta like that, I guess. Taj just got jumped. You want this belt back, John Cena? The one you took? The one that was taken from me? The one that I took from you in the backstage segment? You have to fight me in a ho, in a last hobo standing match. Come take this belt if you can. If not, it's mine. Hear that? All mine. So arrogant is Hobo Tom. It's booed. Such a great entrance he has, just like a hobo would. Or no. Comes to the ring wearing those tidy whities. This should be a fun match. It's the last hobo standing match. 
<laughs> Fat bastard. I have to change that tattoo one day though. Why do you change your tattoo? Seems odd. The under the bridge. One of these competitors has a lot of love for the other. And that's gonna become clear right about now. This match may end right here. Now that's how you make a statement. He's down, and now the official begins the count. Oh, onto the, the steps! And the thing about John Cena that stands out only Bob Backlund and Bruno San Martino has four days combined as WWE champion. And the 11 reigns as WWE champion we were just talking about. That, folks, is a WWE record. And he makes it back to his feet. In this match, will resume fighting to get back to his feet. And he does! What's it gonna take to keep these guys down? John Cena may have to. That's it. He's out. He's down. And now the official begins the count. Oh, my God. Did you? He's down. And now the official begins the count. And he makes it back to his feet. In this match, will resume. And he makes it back to his hey. What the? And he makes it back to his feet. In this match, will resume. We know what this is. It don't go. Yet another one for the highlight reel. He's down. And now the official begins the count. He's starting to stir, Michael. But will he stir enough? 
and he makes it back to his feet. In this match, will resume, and he makes it back to his feet. In this match, will resume. Look out! Look out, look out! It's got to be over now. Oh, man! He's down, and now the official begins the count. And he fails to connect with any... Oh, one of the most effective moves in all of WWE. It's a bit of a reprieve as the official once more begins to count. He can't do it. He can't make it. This is going to be it. Nobody controls the pace of a match quite like this guy. Oh, wow. How was it? That was kind of brutal, though. Right, right onto the steps. Yeah, that's right. Give my belt. That's kind of short. As we shot the book on this match, I can't <laughs> mess up face. Like, come on, get it. When this was simply you can expect from this triple threat match, classic. You said it. And if you can't have fun in a triple threat match, you can't have fun anywhere. And to the pants in, he's out. Look how slow he is to recover here. That was some serious punishment. taking over this match now. We might be seeing the beginning of the end. What a maneuver. Not today, too fast. Man, he's still down after that move. I almost wonder if his bell got seriously wrong there. Not this. He's looking at it again. Just 
struggling a bit here. He doesn't want to let this match get out of control, guys. Wow. It doesn't get much better than that right there. You can see him struggling to stand after all the damage he's taken. What's he going to do here? What's he going to do here? Tailing him. Who did he tail with though? What's that gonna set up? We shall see, folks. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And a happy new year to everyone. I hope you enjoyed the card. I'll do the next special event probably on. Gee, I think it's going to be, um, Mardi Gras, I guess. Yep, Mardi Gras. And have a good night, and Happy New Year, everyone. Bye. Hello, and welcome again to the Hobo Kitchen. I'm your host, Hobo Tom, and I'd like to wish everyone a... Kind of happy new year. I know it's not quite the new year yet. But, let's see here, I guess I can do this. Sweet chili sauce. So, and a little crab meat. We need crab meat. Today in the Cooking with the Hobo special, it's New Year's time, and it's time to make a kind of special meal. Because New Year's is one of those things that, well, by definition, it only happens once a year. Yep, okay. So, today we're going to make a crab ragoon pizza, and I saw this off the web, I'm kind of moving things around the sink. I have to clean my sink up pretty soon. And it's kind of, it's, it's, people say meals I make take way too long, they're too, they're too complex and stuff. That's only because most of these days only happen once a year. So for once a year, you can do something special. Um, right now, there we go. I think I have some nice warm water going. Now remember, because we're actually using live organisms, and yes, for your biology lesson for the day, these are actually living organisms. When they come, a friend of mine told me I can't show things, so, uh oh. These rapid rise yeast, these are actually living critters. So you don't necessarily want to kill them. You don't want them scalding. And you definitely don't want to salt them to death. So the first step in making anything, I'm going to use my scissors because I don't know where these things, I always have a good pair of poultry shears around somewhere. Right now I have kind of the water, nice warm, you can tell it's warm, it's not hot because I can obviously put my hand underneath it without burning myself. That's a good sign, I have a nice large mixing bowl here, a very traditional bowl. Mixing bowl, let's see here, I want to get... That point downwards a little bit. There we go. Downward dog. And mixing bowl. All I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open up. Then one pack of yeast. Thing is, yeast will get all over the place. They're kind of messy critter. And yeast are important because yeast are make. It's gonna what make the dough rise. And it sucks. And for the most part, underneath the microscope, well, that's kind of what yeast look like. I'll set that right there for a moment. Now, you can use various flours. I am just using kind of a pizza crust, thin and crispy, but I don't like thin and, I don't like my pizza thin and crispy. I like my pizza thick and fluffy. You take a look, it says use one cup, 
It's a half cup of warm water. So to activate the yeast, I'm actually going to use each of the pizza dough. Pizza dough requires a certain amount of yeast. You always want your yeast to bloom. I'm actually going to use about one cup of warm water. My cup of warm water. Is that alright? What kind of cruddy pizza is this? Worst comes to worst, yeah. So again, I put my nice one cup of warm water in. Put my measuring cups back. This is fairly important to measure. In fact, you know what? It doesn't look like a lot. That's about all the water there is. Water's still nice and warm. Not quite one cup, a little baker's cup, and I have three minutes left to get this done. And the thing is, yeast actually need... Uh-oh, where did I put all this stuff? There we go. Yeast need an energy source, and I don't need much of the water. Again, you have a little sugars. Yeast need energy. So we'll dissolve sugars because it's only one pack again. I'll swirl it around. The sugars are going to give the yeast a little energy so they can come back to life and start bubbling. So here, take hopefully what's in one yeast package. And I don't like to handle the yeast too much. Fairly nice gentle swirling motion. And I'm just kind of use just, honestly the back of my finger, I want to get as much yeast as I can in there. And they're already beginning to activate, which is a good sign. And generally you don't want to stick your finger in things, but this is my own food. I know where my finger's been. Do you know where your fingers have been? Oh, that sounds pretty freaking terrible. And just kind of swirl up. Activate it. And with this you really need simply added dry ingredients. No. Always want to. And I've already used these in the past. Always want to kind of let them bloom a little bit. There's sugar, there's some warm water. See a nice little slurry. You can see it's kind of getting a little. Oh, there's some bubbles forming already. They're doing the bubble stuff. Ooh, the bubble, bubble. That's good. That means they're activating. You always want to let the yeast activate. I like to do it, honestly, for about 15 minutes before I add in anything else. And probably the most important thing is that you never want to add salt to this because the salt will just kill yeast. So, salt with yeast is bad. When I kind of make my stuff for my dough, Again, it is so 504, probably about. I'm only gonna change right for the gym because I have kind of a whole routine into pizza ma making. So we'll let this sit. You can see it's getting nice and bubbly a little bit. A little bit more. Yeast are kind of ha happy right now. We're gonna let the, this sit and let this sit again for about 15 minutes at so about 520. Looking back, add in the other ingredients. Again, this is all on how to make a crab ragoon pizza. So, I shall be back. Bye. Okay, welcome back, folks. Let's see here. Oh, the, light, the lighting changed. Let's see here. Trying to keep consistency. Yes, the consistency. So, as you can see now, our yeast is nice and, nice and bubbly. It's activated. Yeast are happy. They have, I have sugar. I can do work. So over here, I have my little bread hooks. You want to use this because it spins at a nice slow speed. Very important. So again, we have this nice little slurry mixture. Give it a little shake, just to get things mixed up a little bit. You can actually hear it. Oh, wow. It smells like beer! Oh, that's kind of what it is. 
Ready, right, simply over the bowl so you don't make a freaking mess. Put in one package of flour. Geez, yeah, that was gonna be enough. Nah, two, two's the right amount, because I want my I like my pizza fluffy. There's something to be said about thin cr cracker crust pizza. Another thing to be said about crispy pizza. What I like to do three sets of one, get these hooks in there. And go to one. I don't know if you can see that, so it's there, one. Gentle, motion. Stop, because I do like to get things done a little bit. It's always good to have a nice little spoon, a towel, or something to rest so you don't make a true mess out of your kitchen. Yep, it's a little taping, which is good. And over the bowl, I've learned that if you open it other places, it's all freaking mess. Again, just dump all the contents in. And you want to mix this up pretty thoroughly because you want to have a nice dough ball. The other important part of this, it's not going to hurt the yeast. I always like to use some olive, some real olive oil, not canola oil or any other kind of junk stuff like that. And I have my bread hooks. I'll just swirl it up a little bit. Sometimes the bread hooks work really well, sometimes they don't. Because again, you can tell the bread's kind of flying off. It's good. And so I put this down back over a little bowl. That's from some eggs. It's back on this little seat so you can see the bowl. And all I like to do, remember, do not add salt. This is last. This is last. This goes on crust. Then just take, take your olive oil. What it does, it, well, it adds a little flavor. What I think is that it adds a little flavor to it, and we'll see that once I make the pizza. But it also makes things a lot more easy to work with, because this way you don't have to use butter or anything else. Back in the blender goes again, and...
as you raise up. Let gravity take over. Gravity, folks, is an amazing thing. So look how almost clean those those bread hooks are. Again, you can always shake it off a little bit. Um, you're always going to lose a little bit of dough. See, that's to me the perfect consistency because it's it will dry out a little bit. It's a little bit moister again, I, only because I put that olive oil in, so it's not that perfect dough ball. Again, you can see, most part, it's not liquid. It's just that nice dough. The yeast are still kind of doing their magical yeasty action. So now the real key to this, remember, do not salt this. If you salt it now, you're going to kill the yeast. This stuff goes in last, and probably shouldn't even show. This stuff goes in last. This stuff goes in last, because actually I do a double rise. So this, because kind of the whole house is kind of nice and warm. Um, some places say you can set your oven to 100, 100 degrees beforehand, turn it off. I don't. I just say bowl and oven, nice little dark place. And it's still going to be pretty warm. My pizza pan out, I'll get that all prepped around. You can see, almost no mess. Kind of messed a few spots there. Again, spoons are good. Just get your towel. It's a little bit moist from cleaning up a little bit. Oh, wow, look at that, it's all clean. So that's the second part. I'm gonna let, again, that nice eat doughy stuff rise. Hopefully it'll double in size and won't, it shouldn't spill over. Now we're going to set pan, be pressed down, and start to make a pizza. Okay, so I'm actually off the gym. Gym closes early and I'm too fat from all holiday food. So I'll see everyone in a little bit. Bye. Hey, Bergy, hey, pork, pork, pork. Holy shnikes, look at this. Again, look how much that dough's risen. The whole pot. And welcome back to Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. Wow, that is some good looking dough there. Nice and sticky, too. Again, as you can tell, the dough's risen quite a bit. It's nice and super fluffy airy, still a little bit moist. Probably put a little bit too much water in. And you should, really should, you know, it's just kind of dumb of me. I want to do something first. You can tell it's nice and doughy. Definitely doughy. And what I like to do with my pizza, I'm gonna wash my hands off a little bit, is that I just like to give it a second rise. Oh, that stuff comes right off in the sink. Though. That's good. And before I do that, because again, this is gonna be a night, this is gonna be a super pillowy. You can just tell from all the action that yeast has done, it's gonna be a super pillowy mix of deliciousness. I'm gonna put that over there. Now, let's see, do I have a similar thing? Oh, there we go. So in the pan, what I like to do, and this is where a lot of the seasoning is gonna come in. So it's nice and sticky, nice and non-sticky. Use some margarine. Very liberally coat both the bottom. And very nice liberal coating. Butter on the bottom. As well as the sides, because if not, it's just going to stick to the sides too. Again, anyone who's ever made pie knows that the hardest piece of pie to get out is always the first piece. Again, you can have fancy stuff. I don't. So again, I just use a napkin. Just to make sure there's just no paper product there. And that's pretty it. So next, a little butter on the fingers. That's good though, that bread doesn't stick that much. That's excellent. I also like to add a little bit of olive oil. And to me, this gives it a little flavor and taste. And you can very liberally pour some on the bottom. And this will not go bad because this is all you use for pasta. To cook a little oil in the pasta again and keeps the pasta from sticking to the bottom of the pan. And then just kind of work. And I like to do this for two reasons. One, it adds some flavor to it. Well, for a couple reasons. 
One, it adds some flavor to it. Two, it's obviously the non-stick part. Kind of, and also get it up and around sides as much as you can without spilling it. Oil and open flames is always a bad thing. And it's okay if there's a little puddle there. That's zero problem because, again, that's going to add to the flavor. And once it kind of spreads out, so I've really thoroughly coated the whole pan with margarine and oil. And this is the time I actually like to season the pan. I have to use some seasoning salt. Smells good. Some season all. Now, uh, that's set up, I'm going to take my dough. You can tell that oil really helps in getting it off the edge of the bowl. So I have this nice big dough ball. And without getting too messy, see how it kind of flops right in there. Again, using that oil, and it's really good lubricant. Yeah, lubricant, lube. And really, it allows me to get kind of everything out. Set this ball aside. So really, everything's out. Right now, it's all in the pan, which is exactly what you want. And I like to try and keep one hand kind of clean. So you just kind of knead it a little bit. Do that, just kind of use your fingers, you push a little bit. You are going to get very messy doing this though, folks. I think I even got almost as, just as messy last time. And trust me, it's okay, there's going to be oil. I wonder if it's better if you just oil your fingers up. So I have a nice, so I'm really spreading it out. So once I get it, so actually I actually used kind of the right amount of dough, which was good. It's kind of sticking though. Which again, it's always a problem pizza. Let go a little bit. Key is then you want to build up a little bit of an edge, and all you do is kind of just work your fingers up and down. Go from the inside out. Again, if you if you know what you're doing and you can can do that circle stuff, hey, go nuts. I'm not that proficient at it. This is just one of those things that takes some time. Again, the crust will act, the oil actually acts as a cooking agent, especially when it heats up in the oven. It's one of the other reasons why I like to use the oil so much. I think my cat found a lizard, that's what I'm hearing. So again, it's almost going to be almost like a fried dough. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Hey, better, better for you, I guess. Then you can always try to build your crust up. And I think the dough was just a, I think I added just a bit too much water, but that's okay. Set and wash up. And because the stove is really elastic 
And that's good because that means it's going to be a little bit extra chewy. It's going to be nice and crisp on the outside. Soft, warm, and chewy in the middle. That sounds like a cookie commercial. So now I have the dough in the pan, and what I like to do, I like to let it rise a second time. I'll show you what I, how I did it. See the whole, it kind of circles the whole bottom of the pan for the most part. I'm going to let, let it rise up a little bit more. All that yellow stuff you see is that's the olive oil. And I'm going to let it rise up just a little bit more. So for right now, back in the oven it goes to proof up just a little bit. Still the yeasts are still pretty active. Well, actually forming bubbles still, so that's pretty cool. That's going to go back in the oven for about half an hour. Not as long as the first proof, because that first proof was massive! And we'll come back in half an hour, see how things look. Let's start to clean up a little bit and prepare for the feast! The feast! Oh shoot, I forgot that. I'll be fine. Um, yeah. So we'll be back. Bye. Okay, and 20 minutes later, you can tell there's definitely a slight difference in the whole pizza. It filled up nicely in the pan. And the next step, so what I like to do personally, this is going to go in, in the oven. And I want to set the oven. Let's see here. Bake. Bake. I say. 350 is too low. I have to go about 420, and I always like to pre-bake my pizza a little bit, only because that's a really raw doughy crust, and I still have stuff to do. This is going in the oven. It's going to pre-bake for 20 minutes, but that doesn't mean we can just sit around and do nothing. Because the next item of business, and I have to find a big enough bowl, is to make the crab rangoon stuffing. Very simply, bowl. There's some stuff in it. Basic bowl. And we'll see what happens, but I know you definitely, you want to use whipped cream cheese? because it's much easier to work with. And I want to say it's about two to one case of crab meat. And another cheese, but you cannot eat cream cheese. Look, 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 sniff, sniff. Mom, something smells good, doesn't it, cheese butter? Around, you have food. I have to make human food first. There's some people like to do. I always like to layer things whenever I cook. So again, one thing of cream cheese. Again, whipped cream cheese. It's, for some reason, it's easier. And the other reason why I do like to... Well, that's a lot. Anyway, I think package of cream cheese. I think actually you just might need one package of cream cheese. Because that seems like a lot. No, you do want to leave room for the crust, and you're actually putting more stuff in here. So you have one nice big old package of cream cheese. Make sure it tastes, always make sure it tastes good. Yes. Mmm. Tastes so good. for later. In the garbage bin. In the dustbin it goes. My daddy was a dustman. He wore his dustman pants. Here, I want to keep track of my time because I think last time I did not. My daddy was a dustman. He wore his dustman pants and something of British people. I just don't know all the lines. Wow, I get to use these in 
have your canned crab meat and I think it's most important to use at least canned crab meat. Fresh crab meat's probably the best. Let's get real, I'm not paying ridiculous amounts of money for a one-off thing. Canned crab meat's going to be perfectly good. Um, right now I'm just getting all the juice out because you don't want that much juice actually. And if you use, oh, there we go. Just make sure, make, no, no metal. That's bad for you. Tin's not good for you, it's your thing of iron. Okay, so where was I? Okay. Yep. So now I have, again, nice white crab meat. The whole can goes in. El Garbagino. It's kind of folded in. So this is going to be a nice, really crabby tasting crab ragoon pizza. So it's a lot of time crab ragoon. Sometimes it's just all things like cream cheese with like crab juice. Uh -uh. Not with the hobo cooking it. Getting hungry too. It was kind of folded in so the crab gets in everywhere. Then we're gonna add in, so I'm just gonna set this over here. Hold on, I don't wanna cook that stuff yet. It's nice green onions. Yes, green onions. For Hobo Tom. I never like to use really the tips, because they're, they're kind of like the most beat up. Sear. I just like to cut it kind of small. And people call these green onions or scallions. I think like the words are interchangeable. And try and keep it fairly consistent. I do like me some onion though, so I'm gonna add just probably another couple things. No, cheese pot. I don't know if you like green onion. You like green onion? Sniff, sniff. No, no green onion for you? That's okay. More green onion for me. So again, I'm partially cooking the pizza in the oven while I'm prepping everything else. Then the ends are always kind of raggedy looking. I like to take off kind of like the raggediness of the ends. That's up to you. It's all personal preference. Ask the which part of the onion you know, like a little bit better. Then don't cut your fingers. There's, there should be no human blood. The only thing getting harmed in this, this video are, are vegetables, some yeast, and of course the crab. Now, do not harm yourself. That would be very bad. That's probably that's probably a pretty good deal. Get a couple sprigs. And crab ragoon mixture here. Let's go. Whoop! Hey, I look almost professional doing this. Hooray, Hobo Tom! Set that up again. Time five minutes left. Kind of fold everything in there. And so it's a nice little. So we're going to use more green onion later when we top it off with the mozzarella cheese. And then you can always change this according to personal taste. In fact, I am going to change it to personal taste. I like a little more green onion. Since I have a whole bunch of it, you might as well use it. Again, I always like to align the bulbs. I'm goofy about certain things I, I do and don't like to do. Again, the way you make it is your own personal preference. You can always add in whatever you so desire. You like less onion, less onion. Some people, I think, might just add in some onion powder. I like that little crunch, though. That satisfying crunch of some veggies. It's healthy for you. I'm having my veggies, Mom. Yes, having veggies is good. Into the pool they go. 
Not as professionally as, but still in the pool. And you can kind of tell this. Actually, I think it's really darn good looking, if you ask me. And I think that's going to be more than enough. You just kind of mix it around. That actually looks pretty good. So every bite should be getting me some kind of cream cheese. Next. Need a little sweet chili sauce. Yeah, you have sweet chili sauce. You know how much you like is based on your own personal preference. So my oven just went off. That tells me it's looking really good. I can hear it sizzling a little bit from all that oil, so that's good. Oh wow, that sweet chili paste smells good. Mix it all in there and make it look nice and pretty looking. And let me show you what the pizza looks like because the pizza's, the shell itself is probably for the most part done. And pretty darn solid looking. Actually, that looks really good. And you just want to make sure. And one way to tell if dough is always done. Remember, it's going to cook more, so you don't want it done too much. Well, that's a pretty darn clean looking toothpick. Whew, hot. Mm, get some of that hot oil. So, actually, that's pretty good. So, next. So, actually, since that's done, the oven's still at 420. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, start, might as well just spoon, well, yeah, one thing of cream cheese, that's good. See, and the nice thing is, when you have this nice crust built, it doesn't really flop anywhere. You can actually kind of push it down and in, so you can actually build a crust as you're going. You can use a spoon, just kind of push the crust in. See what I'm doing? I'm using the spoon to kind of build the crust area. A nice little filling space. You can tell it's, again, you don't want to cook the crust because if not it's going to come out hard. Not the, It's going to come out hard like a pretzel. Now, there's actually one more thing I do want to do to the crust. And you don't want to push down all the way because then you're going to go right through it. You can still see there's still like the bottom area. And so you want to fill that area in. You're almost like filling it. That's pretty darn good looking. Then it's okay. It doesn't have to be super perfect. So you have a nice crust area. You can push the in a little bit. Make a nice crust spread. Wow, I'm actually impressed. This is turning out a lot better than I thought of. So what I'm going to do, and again, you can change this recipe. I've changed it a couple times just for personal taste. And I like to use as much filling as you can. Waste not, want not. Bowl goes in the dishwasher. To be cleansed. Yes. Wash up a little bit. This is going to cook for a little bit longer. And just for taste, we can just use some red, crushed red pepper flake. Again, just Not so much in the mixture, but right on the crust.
Damn, that's a perfect looking crust. And the key whenever you make a real specialty pizza, that I've kind of figured out the hard way is that when you're making a specialty pizza like this, especially if it's going to be a real deep dish pizza, you really need to let it cook just a little bit longer to get all that dough. So next, so this is going back in the oven. And I know it's kind of very long to do for just, it's probably a really darn good meal. That's going back in the oven. It's going to cook a little bit longer. Probably another 10 minutes. So coming through the clock, it's say about, wow, it's 8 o'clock already? Shoot. Yeah, 6, 7, 8, wow. Probably about 8, 10, we'll come back. We'll start to finish up the pizza and I'll show you guys. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Let's go take a look in the oven. As you can see, that crust is drying out really nicely and that is almost done looking. So I'm going to just leave that in the oven. Because it's going to really take about 10 more minutes. Now my little cutting board here. The next thing, again, it's not a pizza unless you have cheese. So really the last thing I'm going to do to top off this pizza is that cream cheese, but that cream cheese was really sweet tasting. And then we added some salty aspects, but just to kick it up a little bit notch. And this is entirely based on your own personal preference. I believe the recipe I got this from called for just a blended cheese. You know what? I don't want to go whole hog. I don't want to go all out. I'm using some fresh mozzarella. I'm going to clean off my knife. And if you use a knife for veggies, you can always use it on cheese or anything already cooked. So what I like to do, I like to just kind of move you back a little bit. I'm going to try and get nice, even slices. The cheese slicer, wow, that's great. I don't want to make them too thick, and I don't want to make them too thin. If they're too thick, they're not going to melt right. If they're too thin, they're going to burn very quickly. You want to kind of be even with the way you're cutting things. There's always going to be a skin to it. And the less you get, I know the harder it is. That's why you kind of like a serrated knife. You can kind of saw through it a little bit. Until the less you have to hold, the harder it is. Again, don't cut yourself. The only red you want to see is from the sweet chili paste. I think that's actually been pretty good, though. Might have to have a little slice just in case it doesn't fit. Pretty good. I'm going to pull the pizza out. And we're going to really finish the pizza. Another 10 minutes. You can tell. One, the crust is just turning. The crust is nice and hard. It's turning that golden color. So you know it's almost there. So again, go one. You can kind of push down a little bit on it. Nice thorough melt, meltiness of it. This is going to be hot again. Be careful, this product is going to be hot, folks. Don't blame me if you burn yourself. Well, that's going to melt. Let's see. Save that for a second. And again, just a few more green onions. On top, because even though there's some filling, there's no such thing as having too, too much green onions. And again, you can change this to your own personal taste. You don't have to use as much. And you want that because it's going to... I think the reason why you have the onion is because it's going to actually nicely contrast. It's going to give it a little kick. If not, it would be really sweet tasting, and that would probably be a bad thing. Yeah, I've seen people finish it. You can use the whole, the whole green onion. I think chopped up is pretty good. Again, that's up to you how you want to alter this. I'm only a hobo. What do I know about cooking? So again, and I definitely don't know about your taste. Let's see here. Four more minutes left. Let's put this on top. Then once that cheese starts to melt, it's going to kind of incorporate a little bit better. Some people do like to have the green onion raw. I like mine cooked a little bit. I know if people put arugula on their pizza, they like it raw. I like that cooked too. I think it just adds a little bit different taste and texture to it. Especially if you cook it right. And 
And finally, because you do need a little color with this pizza, it won't be pizza unless you have just a little, a little sweet chili sauce. You can go up and down. Has that nice contrast. I'm gonna finish this and sell that mozzarella cheese. It's all yummy and bubbly. And you don't want to burn the crust at the same same time. You don't want to have a raw crust. Probably 10 more minutes. So I just turned the oven off. I think it's all done because the crust is a really nice golden brown. The cheese has melted amazingly. So let me pull this bad boy out. It's going to be very hot. So again, whenever you pull this out, you always want to wear a hot glove because if not, you're just going to like burn parts of flesh off you. It's never a good thing. Wow. The cheese is super melty. You can see how delicious that looks. It's going to be a feast. So let's see here. Let me kind of wash off my pizza wheel. I forgot to wash it off last time. Stupid hobo. Uh, let's see here. Is this like cutting a pie, the first piece of pizza? Especially when it's kind of handmade, it's never the easiest to get off for some reason. Again, if you're doing a smaller pizza, you can use a knife. I have my little trusty pizza wheel. This is too deep for a knife. I'm kind of hard if you like I am the more traditionalist. I like in triangle cuts. Oh yeah, that crust is done. Always tell the crust is done when you hear a crunchy sound to it. The mozzarella lost a little bit of moisture, and again, it's, it's, it's cheese that's going to move. I'm definitely saving a piece for a friend. pizza maker. And it's how easily it's going to come out of the pan. Anyone can make a pizza look good. It takes a real master of their craft. And for this I'm going to use a nice special spatula. the edges that are always the toughest too. Oh wow, that's just a few melts in there. Shoot. Kind of thought that was going to happen eventually. This might be a knife and fork pizza, I think. That's a shame because knife and fork pizzas are never that good. So again, yeah, it's always the first piece that kind of collapses a little bit. So you're going to go... Oh wow, that's, that's amazing. Then you can always pick up the goo. Look at that cheese though. That's amazing looking. Wow. It's actually turned out really good. It's half as good as I think it's going to be. This is going to be darn good. Again, be very careful because this filling is hot. I'm only going to put two slices on it, I think, at a time. Actually, you know what I think? I'll put that third piece there. And you can always tell that crust is done when you have to kind of cut through it a second time if you're using a pizza wheel. And I think all that cream cheese just kind of melts it. And, oh, so good looking. Chunks of crab and crust. And, like, just literally, like, eat it out of the pan, too. There you go in here. Now for the presentation part. Let's see here. Trying to make it look nice. 
very quickly. I don't want to burn my counters up. That, that would be very bad gun stupid of me. There. You're going in freezer for a friend. Friday. Ooh, freezer for a friend for Friday. That's a pretty cool sounding seer. Still think I have some time. And always clean up your mess. Yep. So it is New Year. Woohoo! Again with this. And look at that pure feast. Again, look at that amazing looking pizza. Have some Prosco with it because you always want to have that. That's for later. And depending on how bored I get, I always hit the doers. Scotch and Canada Dry Ginger Ale mix. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Have a happy new year, everyone. From the one and only Hobo Tom. Happy New Year's, or as I like to say, because I really don't enjoy New Year's, to me it's amateur hour. Happy New Year's Eve! Yes! Thanks everyone for watching. Bye!